Hey guys, Loftengriffer here as always, and today I have some exciting build and painting video for you guys. But before that, I have two short things to say. First of all, I uploaded Let's Build um, the Mitsubishi Zero Fighter a couple weeks ago. I made the cockpit, painted it, and maybe you realize that there's another episode missing for that series. I unfortunately did the rest of the work off camera, uh, since it was mostly paint job and it's hard for me to record me spraying model uh, with the limited, you know, filming equipment I have, uh, but this is how it turned out. If you want to see in the higher resolution pictures, just visit my Facebook page from the link in the description box below. Next, thank you so much for the 40,000 subscribers. I'm really excited to see that our channel is getting close to reaching 50,000 subscribers, but I'll most likely talk about this in detail in a separate video. The kit I selected for this video is 1x35 scaled Jagdpanzer 38 mid-production variant, often known as the Hetzer. It's one of the older kits from the Dragon models, and I would actually recommend picking Tamiya's newly released Hetzer over this, but it was cheap, so I decided to go with it. Inside the box, we have the instruction leaflet, plastic liner for the main chassis and cannon, over 200 pieces of tracks and wheels, four bonus figures, a decal, and one photo-etched parts. These metal parts are good to add some extra detail to the model, but I would have preferred to have metal Schultzen instead. I also noticed a lot of outdated features on the sprue, such as pin marks on visible areas, and majority of parts having excess plastic all over them. I follow the instruction and start building from the lower chassis. Since Hetzer was developed from the already existing chassis, the 38T light tank, it has much fewer numbers of wheels compared to typical German tanks such as the Panzer IV. So I was expecting this process to end quickly, but since most of the parts had enormous parting lines and bad fitting issues, it took me about 2 hours to finish the lower body. Once that was finished, I added the side fenders and move on to the upper hull construction. Gluing both parts together went surprisingly smooth considering the overall poor quality of the kit. It snapped right on leaving only small gaps, so only thing I really had to do was use the cement to glue them together. After adding details to the top of the tank, it's time to mount the 7.8cm Pack 39. Since Hetzer was so small in size, German engineers actually had to mount the cannon offset towards the right side. This resulted in the gun having poor traverse radius, especially towards its left, and it was nice to see this simulated in the model itself as well. After adding the remote machine gun, which I swapped to MG42 from MG34, 90% of the build is now finished. The kit has good amount of information to make it look detailed and realistic, but I still added few extra details myself. Since I wanted to try out a new technique I learned from YouTube, I decided to paint this Hetzer in standard dark yellow overcoated with white camouflage. I start by painting the entire tank dark red, using Mr. Color's H17 whole red. I then mask the exhaust pipes and spray dark yellow while trying to leave some of the red primer still visible. Once that's done, I started to add more color to smaller parts using an amelic paint, as well as applying the iron cross decal on the hull, and prepared for the window camouflage by protecting the entire model with a dull coat. Oddly enough, here's when I needed to use men's hairspray, not to make my hair look good, but to create a weak water coat below the white paint. This is going to later allow me to rub the model and create realistic looking worn off winter camouflage. I made sure both hairspray and the white paint is completely dried, and started to rub parts using a toothbrush with mix of water. It took some time for the water to soak into the hairspray, but I was satisfied with the end result.
Now it's time to finish the last 10% of the build, the infamous tracks. There are a few ways uh, to build tracks. Most common is a one-piece track made from rubber, uh, but Dragon tends to use something called magic track, which you would need to attach each track links one by one. Since this is an old kit, I didn't even have pre-separated magic tracks. Instead, I had to cut, shape, and sand all 200 tracks myself. I then lined 100 pieces each using flipped masking tape, glued them together using Tamiya cement, quickly sprayed with mix of black and iron, and wrapped around the wheels. I did make a mistake on which way the tracks are supposed to be facing, but luckily that's barely noticeable uh, looking from the outside of the tank. But other than that, it looked good and realistic, which is hard to achieve using one-piece rubber tracks. 99% of the build is now finished, but I decided to weather up the tank to darken the entire tone of the model. And here is the completed Jagdpanzer Aachen Dreizig Hetzer. You can see how compact this tank was when compared with the figure. It's only slightly higher than Mr. German over here whose height is around 180cm and reverted scale. It's hard to believe that four crewmen fought together inside this tiny tank, being outnumbered and are resourced by the allied nations. Overall, I'm really happy with the model and how it turned out. And also, a big thank you to Andy's Hobby HQ for easy to understand tutorial on the winter camouflage. Hope you enjoyed the video as always, and I'll see you in the next one.